Jordan, could I ask you a question real quick about tomorrow? Jordan, can you hear okay? Okay. Uh, uh, Council Greider or Member Greider wanted to know if she could ask you a question about tomorrow. Um, is there, there was some talk about having screens there and I'm not sure if we're there yet um, for the meeting tomorrow night. And I was just wondering about like bringing my own laptop um, or printing out some of the packet or the agenda. Do you have any thoughts or suggestions on that? Yeah, you know what? I apologize. It is going really in and out on my laptop. So I'm going to switch over to my desktop to hopefully stabilize my internet connection. Okay. And um, we can Hunter, talk about it heard, later. Um, Nicole's question, if you can answer that, that'd be great. Uh, did Jordan pass the baton over to me? Yes. <clears throat> um, count, uh, member Greider, could you repeat? Yourself really quick. I'm sorry. For the meeting tomorrow night, at one point there was some talk about having screens, um, but I'm not sure if we are there yet. And any suggestions on bringing our own laptops or if we wanted to look through the agenda still during the meeting? Uh, so the first part about screens, the equipment it has been ordered, but it will not be installed for several months. Okay. So what we're working on is having um, you would be able to see a screen. There's a TV screen set up that all the counselors can see, and then there's a projector. And as far as bringing your own uh, personal laptop, I would defer to Jordan <clears throat> on, on that. Um, but I, I know that we are struggling to um, gain internet access at, is this people? Mm. Jordan, I, I, I would suggest that we just bring hard copies of the packet um, until we get to that point. Just, I mean, I think it's up to each member or counselor to choose whether or not they want to subject their laptops to um, the public record that way. Um, and so um, that choice becomes a choice if we have hard, hard copies, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And I'll bring hard copies of both the agenda packet as well as the PowerPoint slides, just in case that um, goes awry tomorrow as well. We also used to have little tablets. Um, and are those tablets still available? And are they even, you know, do they work? I would rec recommend for us not to use them. They're very old iPads. Um, did we, were they in use before we went onto Zoom? Mm -hmm. They were, okay. I'll go back and take a look, but I know that they were, they're in very bad condition. Some of them have cracked screens and, um, you know, if they haven't been turned on in, in two or three years, they might not turn back on. So, I'll, but I'll take a look. And then Thank you, and everyone. One of the, the bridges we're gapping is we did place the order for the full equipment upgrade to have hybrid meetings. And we're just trying to, you know, figure out that gap until that equipment gets in our hands. So hopefully in a couple of months will be a streamlined situation. Um, I will share tonight for the chair, um, member Byers and member um, Perry Miller. Uh, Perry Miller, thank you, are both out sick tonight. Okay, so um, if you are all set, uh, I'll go ahead and open up this meeting. Uh, Hector, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, uh, so um, it's 6.03. And we'll call the uh, Talent Urban Renewal Agency regular meeting of December 6th to order. Roll call, please. Member Panemaroff? Here. Member Greider? Here. Member Pestizo? Vice Chair Clark? Here. And Chair Harris Flood? Here. Uh, I don't believe we have a quorum. We do with Tura, we do. Oh, Actually, Tura, okay. yeah. pardon me, pardon me, uh, you have a quorum. Thank you. Yeah, you're right, uh, Hector. Um, in one scenario, we would not, so that's not far off. Thank you. Um, uh, so 
Um, the second item on the agenda, speakers heard on non-agenda items. Hector, do you uh, have any request forms? Uh, we have not received any speaker request forms. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the consent calendar uh, with the financial packet. Anybody have any, has everybody had a chance to review the financial packet? And if so, are there any questions? Is Tessa here to present the packet or uh, just take questions? Just to help take questions. Okay, anybody? Um, I just have one question. Uh, I, I was a little confused by the um, uh, the investment recap, the loan recap, um, and uh, I, I I I can't tell, but I thought we closed we closed that loan. And it and and if it shows that um, we closed it. I just see I see interest accruing through 2025 and I and I was fairly sure we closed it. So at um two I believe it was two term meetings ago, um the board decided to hold on to that loan until we knew that there was no further projects needed at the gateway site. Okay. Um so my memory is just inaccurate. Thank you. And I yeah, I don't remember that. Maybe I don't remember if I was there or not. Um okay. Uh, well, good. That's the only question I had. Otherwise, um, oh, I did have one other question. I noticed that uh, Mike Davis had a tree grant of 1180, and I, I thought the cap on the tree grants was was 500. Um, so was that for like multi properties or yeah? Okay, that was, was my only other question for three different properties. Great. Um, well, great. I'm glad uh, glad to see that he uh, utilized and planted trees. Um, that's those are my questions. Anybody else? Okay, uh, if there's no further inquiries, I will entertain a motion. Uh, Member Panamareth. I move to approve the consent calendar. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent calendar. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Member Panemaroff? Yes. Member Greider? Yes. And Vice Chair Clark? Yes. Um, motion carries, Chair. Thank you, Hector. Next item on the agenda is item 4.1, proposed revitalization grant program. Steph? Yes, so as discussed in our last meeting, we are proposing having a revitalization grant program um, to help the businesses and commercial properties in the current urban renewal district improve the appearance of, enhance access to, and improve the marketability of their businesses. Um, this is a more refined program than what was presented at the last meeting. Um, in the agenda packet is both uh, draft program guidelines and draft application. Um, but all in all, this program would offer up to $15,000 in direct grant funding for eligible projects. And some examples of eligible projects are on the screen. Um, and really the, the main focuses of, of distributing grant funds is really to help visually improve storefronts and streetscapes for businesses increase access to that business in that location, um, help the businesses of that location better support public health and safety, particularly with our COVID-19 world, and to address um, impacts from the Alameda fire um, that many businesses have reported experiencing, such as blistered paint, damaged signs, et cetera. Um, you know, the biggest changes compared to when this was last brought before the board, is we did some on the ground talking to businesses who might be interested in this program. And really what we heard from businesses right now is that they do not have cash on hand and that their credit is tapped out as they try to survive the last two to three years with both COVID and the fire. And so with that feedback, you know, we removed the matching program for this grant where originally it was designed as a $5,000 grant and folks could match additional money um, to increase that amount. 
Um, we also create an option for a portion of the grant to be released before all invoices are submitted. So this is if there is a business that does not have cash to pay contractors or to pay down deposits to have the work started. This is an avenue where they can still participate and apply for this grant um, and help improve their storefront or their business. Um, also increase the maximum grant size. Talking to some folks who have already gotten an estimate from the projects they want to do. Um, they are, it is pricey right now to make any changes, both for landscaping, for painting, um, et cetera. And so we elevated the max grant size to really help folks either complete a, a project or at least complete a stage of the project to a, a level large enough to make a difference. Um, and because this is such a larger grant size in our beautification program, you know, we would recommend that the board review the applications on a rolling basis, um, or if there's another body that would like to review the applications um, against the criteria for the grant. And so what I am asking for the board tonight is if you have any feedback or would like to see any changes to this program. Um, and with changes or without, if you feel ready to have the Urban Renewal Agency let this grant go live. Are there any questions of staff? Councilor Panamarev? Yeah, I'm just trying to remember um, how much of how much we've budgeted for uh, overall for these grants. Yeah, so we have over $100,000 budgeted this year between both the beautification grant program and any other grant programs we may start. We have used to date this fiscal year, um, I believe about $6,000 towards the beautification grant program. I expect potentially another four to $5,000 in that area. So I expect, you know, about 90,000 to be available for a revitalization grant program. So that would be um, six grants if people took the, the full amount? Six grants if they took full amount. Okay, thanks. Good quick math. Always count on Eleanor for that. Uh, Member Greider. Yeah, thanks. Um, I love this. I am a little bit new to, I know we have a quorum, but um, the half of us are not present about um, about that many. So um, yeah, I'm just wondering about that piece of moving forward um, or if there's a timeline, Jordan, that you need for this um, or if, I don't know, Jordan, if you had heard any feedback from other members of the board? Yeah, so I have not discussed the specific project with board members beyond its original concept a couple months ago. Um, I will say from my perspective, of if the board approves this, when we would implement it, they probably wouldn't start implementation um, until January. So if the board wanted to wait to even make their vote till January, that would work well with the timeline um, as well as voting tonight. So if you would like to, to wait on this vote, um, that would not impact the rollout of this program. Anybody else? I have a couple questions, Jordan. <clears throat> One is, um, I, I think that I um, feel pretty comfortable about um, taking, removing the matching grant requirement. Uh, um, although I think the intention of this is to help businesses revitalize. And I think there are, um, there, there's the potential from, from um, getting away from really just revitalization and, um, and, and perhaps subsidizing um, development. And um, I'm not, there's a big difference between the two, but, um, but I think the idea here is to really um, help uh, businesses um, improve their facades, uh, help them sustain through these difficult times, and, and in some cases, um, help them uh, recover from damage from the fire. Although I can't think of a lot of businesses that are still standing that um, sustained. I think there was some paint damage to some of the businesses on 99, but is there, but that's not in the burn, uh, that's not in the current district. So I'm thinking inside the current district, I, I'm, I, you know, it might be me, but I can't think of any businesses that are, that are really, there's two. there's two, what are they? Um, I will, two that I know of for sure, or is the, um, 
where the those books the used bookstore is along with the real estate office and the talent gem emporium that has oh. listed with paint and damaged signs yeah, and the then the building. osteopathic business they lost all of their landscaping to the fire okay good that's good to know um but uh but i, I guess um what where i'm actually going with this is um having removed the matching funds requirement and still wanting to kind of maintain our intention, I think, is that I, I would like to see a little language built out in that in that way that what the intention of this is so that so that we can, um, if the board is going to review this or another body, um, they can understand that the intention is to, to revitalize. I mean, that's mitigating blight is a very specific thing. And um, and that and sort of recovering from any fire damage are two things that we, you know, at CERP, I totally support, but I'd hate to, to see it get used um, to um, misused is all I really need to say. So um, I wonder if there's, uh, do you, can, can you imagine building um, some, you know, smithing some, a little more language around the intention of, of this that might guide and maybe even building that a little bit into the criteria. Does that? What I'm and let me make sure I'm, what I'm hearing is what you're saying. Um, as I start thinking about ideas for criteria, I'm thinking of a criteria to show that the business does not have funds to do this on their own. I think that probably, yeah. That I mean is, but can we do that? Does it feel um, like you can do that? I mean, that seems onerous. I think you know what it would be. It'd be more of a what I'm imagining is kind of more of an honor system or a narrative where we ask them on the application, like, please share, you know, what, if your business is financial hardship or if you're not able to run this project on your own, please share why. I think that's great. And I think I would also ask, how does this fall under the blight description or um, the recovery description? That that might be how, I, and and I, I like the honor system. I like that suggestion. I think uh, that's uh, friendly. Um, but I do think it gives um, uh, gives everybody an opportunity to, if there's concerns, that we have an area that we can deep dive a little bit, just in case. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that I um, I recall from the other revitalization, it's been a few years, um, that there was language that talked about how many times a building can ask for revitalization. And if I recall correctly, and I don't know that this even worked good, but if you owned the building, you could ask for revitalization. And if you were the business and the owner already asked, you could not ask. Mm -hmm. And um, so in other words, it was a way of keeping buildings from double dipping or, um, and I hate that term, but that's, that's really what it boils down to. In some cases where there's several businesses to keep asking for um, revitalization. So I'd, I'd like to see maybe some language that uh, speaks to that, but that is also reasonable. <clears throat> um, and then also limit the number of times it can be asked for. Um, so I, I would imagine you could probably say the same, same thing with the same language, if that makes sense. Like, like, you, know, like a, you could ask for one, it, this limits you to 10 to $15,000 a year. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so you couldn't ask for another one. So what I'm hearing is is maybe putting in the criteria of um, or the guideline around, you know, one grant per property per fiscal year of the program. Yeah, and I guess um, I wonder if we need to add any language about prioritizing the owner over the business or the business over the owner. I don't know. Um, I would hate for that to get weird, but yeah. um, I'll. I haven't I haven't given that enough thought to uh, to to talk about it any further. But uh, yeah, I do. I do. I mean, there are some buildings that have several businesses in it. You can see where suddenly the whole 90,000 is gone. Um, and then, um, yeah, the survey that you took about that, it was that a, was that just a walk around oral survey? Is there any data on that? No, um, I just took on myself to reach out to business owners or ones had reached out to us through the beautification grant to see if there was more funds available to help them. Did you document that at all? Um, I did not. Okay. Um, I don't have any heartburn about that, but I, I would ask that if we do that moving forward in any context mm -hmm. that we we add uh, some documentation to the record about it. 
great you know, a survey um, or whatever, you know. Um, I don't want to make it hard. Even just a narrative from whoever does the uh, does the inquiries. Um, okay, I think that's it for me. I'm so glad to see this. Thank you. Um, I know businesses are waiting for it, and um, there's a couple couple downtown that can really use it um, that want it. You know, don't I don't mean to sound insulting, but um, uh, I think it's it's going to be a great program. And I really appreciate that you worked on it. Absolutely. So if you all as board don't mind, I would love to recommend not to vote on this tonight. Um, but let me go ahead and incorporate some of these changes and bring it in front of hopefully the larger board in January. Beautiful. Okay. Chair, I'm ready for a poor point when you are. Oh yeah, sorry. I, I got to reading what you had, what you pulled up. Um, a bright, shiny object. A little distraction going on there. Uh, item four point two is update to the Gateway Transitional Housing Program staff. Yeah. So just to inform the board, um, Access has declared their official intent to take over the Gateway Transitional Housing Program. Um, they are currently working with both the state and with us to figure out how that transition would work. If all goes smoothly, um, the goal is to have that transition away from road retreat and to access occur on January 1st. Um, and just to remind the board, the way that this is being structured, or is being structured, pardon me, is Tura is gonna go forward with purchasing the trailers, and then we will lease the trailers and the land to access to run the transitional housing program. Um, I am currently working with agency lawyers to draft that lease agreement. Um, because of this tight turnaround, I am asking the board to preemptively um, support my draft and execution of a lease agreement with access for use of that site. Um, or we could schedule a meeting in a few weeks to approve it once it's fully written, um, if that is a better comfort level for the board. Um, but my goal is I would want that lease you know, drafted and signed prior to January 1. Any questions or comments for staff? Uh, Member Clark? Yeah, what would the, uh, the term of this uh, contract agreement be? For how, for how long and, and what's the, um, what is the language or, or uh, language you're thinking about in terms of when it would or could be terminated? Within? Yeah. Yeah, so there's two, we're discussing two stipulations. One is when the conditional use of the property is no longer allowed, or when there are no longer wildfire survivors that are needing transitional housing, whichever of those occurs first. Um, so as a reminder, the gateway site is able to be established through the executive order that has um, temporary emergency accommodations executive order is what allows us to have that traditional housing in a zone that typically wouldn't allow it. Um, and so as long as that continues for, um, we can continue the gateway traditional housing program. Any other comments or questions? Um, I, have, I have a comment. Um, so, um, hard lessons learned and to some degree, as I say, I prefer seeing the lease before we approve it. Um, just, uh, I, I, we're under new leadership and, and I have a lot of faith in our new leadership. So please don't hear me differently, but um, it, where lease agreements in particular, I, I think it, uh, I'd personally like to have an opportunity to, to look at it. Okay. Um, I, but of course I'll respect the decision of the board. Uh, member Clark and then member Panamareff. Yeah, I uh, I concur with that. I think that's, um, I feel most comfortable with that as well. I wonder, trying to remember um, if we, uh, is there a possibility that we could do a tour meeting before the second council meeting of the month? Do we have that time open? So I cannot guarantee that the lease will be ready by then. 
Um, if we are to delay, it would likely end up being a meeting in between Christmas and January um, that I will call to have that lease reviewed by the board. Okay. Member Panamareth? Yeah, I'm just wondering if we could go ahead and improve it tonight and then just have it um, emailed to us for review and to provide, you know, feedback um, if needed. If there were, you know, decisions to be made as a board, we could, you know, potentially look at revisiting that. Because I... I don't want to set us up for uh, a last minute meeting or put you put you under the gun because you want this sign. It would be ideal to sign this January, beginning of January, right? If if all other things work, yes, we do want to sign it before January 1, um, though there before are a lot January. of pieces, you know, with trying to contract with the state. You know, my preference would be um, if the board would like to see the lease agreement that we just have that in the public meeting space rather than via email and we can just make it a quick quick meeting um i may assign um an interim person to run that meeting if i'm not available that week between christmas and january um but we can make it a painless process as possible Emma panamareth yeah I'm, I'm a little concerned about the ability to get a quorum mm. That's that's what I'm afraid of happening. So so it seems like what what we want is you know we're we're we could approve the idea, but we want you know to check um, you know check the language of the lease in some way. I'm wondering if is there a way that we can like uh, if we can um, kind of verbalize that tonight and just make it part of the motion. Or, you know, like subject to, we could even just do it subject to review by the mayor um, and the or the chair and the vice chair. Uh, and then you could just handle it that way. I think I would love um, any and all feedback tonight as I'm actively working with our, our attorney and with access to create the scope of the lease agreement. Um, you know, the other option I'd like to throw out there for you all is we could, you know, visit the lease at our first January meeting um, and just ask to have the the official transfer date to happen after that January 6th meeting. Sorry, what I feel like what date is our first meeting? Um, after the third. Yeah, alternatively, I mean, uh... I, I do have a lot of faith in our current um, administration and um, but also um, uh, I, I was listening to the public when when they um, when they said loud and clear that they want to see us uh, you know see us step up our game uh, on oversight and um, I uh, I agree with that I agree with that feedback and um, I, I guess what I would say, um, alternatively, I would be comfortable with going ahead with this motion. And I mean, we can always, um, well, you, once you sign it, I think we're kind of locked in. But um, what I'd like to see happen moving forward is for us not to be in a situation where the next meeting is further out than the execution date. And not, not that I'm suggesting for a second that, that, that any of that's intentional, but that's, that's, What's got us hemmed in a little bit is that we want to get it signed before we have a chance to review it. Um, and maybe if we can just just agree to try to avoid that scenario uh, moving forward, I, I certainly don't want to cause any difficulty with access um, getting this signed. Um, you know, the bigger the bigger picture is is uh, the management of that site. So um, I, you can but I hope you can see the conundrum that I'm experiencing. You know, if if the timing is of great concern to the board, you know, I would be comfortable if, if you all made a motion tonight um, to draft and execute a lease agreement um, only in the scenario where quorum could not be reached prior to January 1. Um, so that would be if I can get quorum with all of you to review the lease agreement before signing it, we would. Yeah, I admittedly even saying it out loud, I don't know if I actually love this idea. It's an idea passing through my head, but um, 
I think, you know, hearing the concerns and I do, you know, want to support um, accountability and board powers, you know, my request or recommendation would be let's wait and see if I can, you know, move quickly on this lease agreement. It's not a complicated tool, so hopefully it can happen before Christmas. Um, and that way I can get a meeting on our calendars and we can figure out and hopefully reach quorum. Um, and if not, do it as soon to January 1 as we can. When is the next council meeting? December uh, 21st. Okay. So the other thing I would encourage you to do is, um, if we don't take action on it, is take a shot at getting it to us on January 21st. Okay. That is, um, you know, I realize that's a tall order, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I, I, I think that leaves that on the table as well, is what I, I guess what I would say. Yeah. Yeah, so let's, uh, if board's comfortable, let's leave this for now, and I will work to get a draft in front of you all ASAP. Yeah, uh, Member Panamareth? Yeah, I just also wanted to suggest that, that that meeting be via Zoom, especially if people are out of town. Yeah, we are going to continue to have Tourette as a Zoom meeting until we can work out all of the technical kinks. Um, down at town hall. Great. So, so we'll make the council deal with all the. We are the making bugs. the council be the guinea pigs. Yes. And we just get to sit back as Tara. Yeah. Unless by some miracle we're able to get it in front of us on the twenty first, we could do it. We could just schedule right. a half hour early, right, and show up a half hour early. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I that's very accommodating. And again, I just you know I'd, I'd like the record to reflect that we've reviewed these documents. Um, even though, as I said, I doubt very seriously that I would have any question. I would have any questions um, uh, about your work. So, um, all right. Thanks, everybody. So uh, we'll move on to. Um, we're just um, really we're just really concluding some major work here. Today. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, item number 4.3 on the agenda is, once I get to the first page of my agenda here, um, general updates from the executive director. Staff? Great. Um, you have my full report in the agenda packet, but just to give you the, the high level highlights, we have begun our fiscal year 22 auditing process. Um, we have completed and now own the tax lot 2200. Um, as of last week, and so I'll be reaching out to um, to take next steps with that project. We have purchased all the winterization goods for the travel trailers at Gateway Site, and December 17th, Rogue Action Center is hosting a winterization workshop for the residents. And then I am, have formally started working with Tom Humphrey for the preparation for an RFP for the permanent development of the Gateway Site. Um, and the agenda packet kind of outlines the, the steps or processes that we're looking at taking to develop that RFP. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions um, about those updates or any other urban renewal projects. And then I would like to hold a brief discussion to see if the board is open to moving our regular meetings just to help me balance some capacity load issues. Uh, okay, are there any questions or comments about this update? I just have uh, one question about the purchase of uh, tax lot 2200. So you've closed on the deal. We own the property. What's the next step in the, yeah. in the plan? Yeah, so the original um, intent of purchasing this property was to actually do a land swap with another property owner um, so that one of our long term projects, um, we have the land in place to be able to do that. So since we've closed, I do need to reach out to that property owner um, and have her review the documents that our lawyer has compiled for a land transfer. Uh, is any, uh, I, I would imagine you would tell, you would have already reported if there was any concerns, but it just sounds like everything's going along quite well. It has, and I will admit um, to that landowner has been really great and patient as we've just waited to have um, official ownership of that, of that property before moving to the next step. Um, okay, and then my other question is on the preparation of RFP for the permanent development. Can you, can you describe the steps and the, and what you think is the timeline for that? 
Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up the agenda pack to share because um, I have been so focused on rebuild data that I don't want to miss one here. Pardon me, I'm going to get you all dizzy with scrolling. Um, yeah, so kind of first step, and this would really be in partnership with Tom, North and Clark Community Development Department, is take the recent gateway site feasibility study um, and other community driven documents regarding the infrastructure uses of that gateway site, just to make sure we're all up to date um, with the current community vision. And that's, you're doing that with Tom, did you say? Yes, Tom yeah, and our okay. community development department at the city. Yeah, okay. Um, and then we also want to do a little bit more research around kind of what some of the identified uses for that property could be so that we have a strong understanding of what um, is possible and what we'd be interested in having on that site. We would then try to target developers who fall into those categories of housing that's been identified or um, commercial developments for that property. Um, you know, figure out some of some problems associated with the gateway. I shouldn't, I use problems in my packet, but not problems, but just challenges, which is of course our gateway transitional housing program, making sure people find their housing before we um, start construction on that site, making sure the current infrastructure is in a space where developers will be attracted and want to come bid on the property, um, making sure our zoning and development codes align with what we want to do on the property, et cetera. Um, figuring out what incentives are available. So really just knowing how we can really sell and make sure that this project sees itself through. This will be our third RFP for, for this project. Um, and then target specific developers um, for that RFP um, to really try to get that specific interest on the thing. And then to go ahead and distribute it and, and hopefully we find a good candidate. Um, and you, the expected timeline for this? You know, I would say, I needed to talk with Tom to see his busyness, but I'd say about three months. We could fast track it, absolutely. Um, but given that the Gateway Transitional Housing Program, you know, is going to continue um, for at least the current foreseeable future, you know, want to just take our time and really do this thoroughly. Unless there's any other things um, that are pressing or an opportunity that we want to take advantage of. Um, well, when I look at this, I did have a couple of questions. Um, and one of them was in the bullet point two, um, it, it almost appears that we are looking um, for maybe a revisioning of that site and I might be reading too much into it. What, um, can, can you describe what you're really look, what's the objective of, of that second bullet point? Yeah, so that, section is really us making sure that we understand the stated community vision. Um, I think our community has done a lot of visioning of the site, um, both through Salazar's work currently as well as what happened prior to the fire. So really that bullet is just about, you know, us as staff making sure we fully understand um, what is meant in that community vision and how we can help make it happen. So I would not say community revisioning, it would just be um, us getting up to speed on what's wanted. So, so that when a developer who would, who I would assume will get this information in part through the RFP process, when they make a proposal, you'll be able to filter it or vet it through that lens. Is that what I'm gathering? Yes, okay. Yes. That's great. And then, you know, I, I expressed concerns at the time that, uh, when we, um, engaged Salazar for that process that it seemed redundant given the process that we'd already gone through um, at the gateway. But um, so much of what they did was really just throughout the entire burn scar. Um, and so I, I just, you having taken a look at all that process that we went through, um, it is, is what, Cells are providing for us going to be useful in the gateway site and then out into the rest of the community. Like, does that does that seem like a kind of a a matrix that we're going to be able to use? Um, I'm hopeful. Yes, admittedly, I have not dived deep enough into the Salazar's report yet. 
um, to to share an opinion um, on that. You know, I will say really what these first two bullet points in the in the staff report are is to do that deep dive um, to make sure that it it all aligns. Great, uh, and you know that actually gets that actually makes a finer point of what I'm getting to is that. Um, and uh, the, the work is valuable, and it was certainly a great process. And and so is the original community vision. And how how to dovetail those things or really overlay those two things, I think, is a concern that I'd like to see us bring value to those two processes by really by really taking time to do that to to overlay those two processes. And and you certainly have the right team for that with. Uh, our own community development and Tom and, and yourself. I think you guys can accomplish that. I'm hoping to see something, a presentation on, on, on some sort of product of that at some point. Do you think that's possible or? Yes, I mean, we will absolutely keep the board along with every step of the way of development since ultimately um, it is a board decision both around you know the RFP language as well as who we select um, yeah. from the RFP process. I have to admit, I'm maybe I'm just a little excited to see, you know, how how those two really great processes um, can come together in in your hand in your guys's hands. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, good. That's that's uh, what I wanted to hear. And so um, I, I I still um, I want to go back to the timeline thing. Um, yeah. I appreciate that we want to take our time, um, but do you see this happening in 2023? Yes, I, I mean, I see it being accomplished um, in this fiscal year. In this fiscal year. Oh, good news. Okay, great. Um, all right, that's it for me. One of the fun things about having this kind of an agenda is we get a little discussion time. I really appreciate that. Anybody else? All right. Thanks, Jordan. Yeah, do you mind and if I can just get... A, a poll of the room around shifting us either the second Tuesday or the fourth Tuesday. Okay, again, general thumbs up. I will go ahead and check with the board members who are not present tonight just to see if there is a, uh, if they're able to as well. So when is planning? The third Tuesday? I think, ooh, let me look. Petra, do you know off the top of your head? I wanna say the fourth Tuesday of the month. Every fourth Tuesday. So I'm out on the fourth Tuesday. I'm pre I'm pre scheduled. We're gonna take we're gonna take every week of your month with with sort of public service. I so always. I would the second Tuesday. Yeah. Are you wanting to move it in a week away from a council meeting? Is that your objective? Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, and this, you know, could be a, a temporary thing too, if need be, if it ends up that the first Tuesday works best for everyone, even just having this shift for the next couple of months would be very helpful for me. Member Clark? Yeah, uh, I could do the second Tuesdays. Does anyone have conflicts on the second Tuesday of the month? Okay, okay great. I will check with the other board members and hopefully that works for them. Well, I hope this uh, I hope this offers you a little wind at your back. Me too. Um, okay. Uh, was that everything for your um, your director's report? It is. Are there any items from the board? Anything we'd like to see on a, a queue up in a future tour meeting? All right. Any written communications? There are none. Uh, so at this time, uh, which is 644, I'll adjourn uh, the urban renewal meeting. Thank you, everybody. Great, great meeting. Thanks, all. Thanks, everyone.
Good night, everybody.